follow up to Inside the Quran. But this time the question is, is the Quran corrupted or changed? To answer this question, I'm going to go into the hadith to show how the Quran was compiled, by whom, and also show if anything was taken out or if there were any other versions. But first, I'm going to start with the topic of abrogation, starting with Surah Al Baqarah 2106. Whatever communications we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, we bring one better than it or like it. Do you not know that Allah has power over all things? And then there is Surat An Nahl 16101. And when we change a verse in place of another, and Allah knows the best of what He sends down, they say, You are but a forger. Nay, but most of them know not. These verses speak for themselves, really. Now I know full well what the abrogation of the Mecca verses are, but don't you ever wonder how an all-knowing and all-wise God could change His mind so much in the space of 23 years and in the length of 114 chapters? Plus, if the Quran was written on tablets in heaven from the beginning of time, why did Allah wait 2,000 years after the Torah and 600 years after the Gospel to reveal it? And why would those tablets have Allah changing His mind so much? Especially when according to the Quran his words cannot be changed, nor can the meanings. But there are, according to some Islamic scholars, over 200 abrogations in the Quran. With that being said, how eternal could something be if it is cancelled out? Which is exactly what happens to those Mecca verses. They are cancelled out for something better. Which means the Mecca verses were not perfect. Meaning according to the Quran, God is an imperfect being who makes mistakes. As I said before, in the space of 23 years and 114 chapters, he cancelled out over 200 verses. Now, on to the main point of the video, is the Quran corrupted? In order to find the answer to that, we would have to go to historical documents on how it was transmitted and compiled. Now, I'm going to use only the Hadith of Sahih Bukhari, since they are considered as the most trusted collection of Hadith. I'm going to start with a quick background on the compilation of the Quran, which is not my own understanding, but according to the Hadith. First off, despite what you may have heard, the Quran was not compiled during the life of Muhammad. Regardless of some claims that he oversaw the final assembly of the Quran, that is simply not true according to Islamic sources. The manuscripts, some of which were written on palm stalks, thin white stones, and also on the hearts of some men, meaning some verses were memorized, they were all compiled first under the authority of Abu Bakr by Zayd bin Thabit, and then later, the final version, which is the one read by Muslims today, was put together by Uthman, around 20 years after Muhammad's death. Again, this is all according to the Hadith. Okay, so I'm going to start with the Hadith on the compilation of the Quran, how it was put together and by whom. And also, in this Hadith, it talks about the burnt versions in which Uthman burned, meaning before the final Quran was put together, there were other versions. Sahih Bukhari, Volume 6, Book 61, Number 509, Narrated Zayd bin Thabit. Abu Bakr as Sadiq sent for me when the people of Yamama had been killed, i.e. a number of the Prophet's companions who fought against Musalema. I went to him and found Umar bin Al-Khattab sitting with him. Abu Bakr then said to me, Umar has come to me and said, Casualties were heavy among the Qura of the Quran, i.e. those who knew the Quran by heart. On the day of the Battle of Yamama, and I am afraid that more heavy casualties may take place among the Qura on other battlefields, whereby a large part of the Qur'an may be lost. Therefore I suggest you, Abu Bakr, order that the final Qur'an may be collected. I said to Umar, how can you do something which Allah's Apostle did not do? Umar said, by Allah, that is a good project. Umar kept on urging me to accept his proposal till Allah opened my chest for it and I began to realize the good in the idea which Umar had realized. Then Abu Bakr said to me, you are a wise young man, and we do not have any suspicion about you. And you used to write the divine inspiration for Allah's Apostle. So you should search for the fragmentary scripts of the Quran and collect it in one book. By Allah, if they had ordered me to shift one of the mountains, it would not have been heavier for me than this ordering me to collect the Quran. Then I said to Abu Bakr, How will you do something which Allah's Apostle did not do? Abu Bakr replied, By Allah, it is a good project. Abu Bakr kept on urging me to accept the idea until Allah opened my chest for what he had opened the chests of Abu Bakr and Umar. So I started looking for the Quran and collecting it from what was written on palm stalks, thin white stones, and also from the men who knew it by heart, till I found the last verse of Surat al-Tawbah. 
with Abi Khuzaima al Ansari, and I did not find it with anybody other than him. Volume 6, Book 61, Number 510, Narrated Anas bin Malik. Hudayfa bin al Yaman came to Uthman at the time when the people of Shem and the people of Iraq were waging war to conquer Armenia and Azerbaijan. Hudayfa was afraid of their differences in the recitation of the Quran. So he said to Uthman, O chief of the believers, save this nation before they differ the book of the Quran, as Jews and Christians did before. So Uthman sent a message to Hafsa saying, Send us the manuscripts of the Quran so that we may compile the Quranic materials in perfect copies and return the manuscripts to you. Hafsa sent it to Uthman. Uthman then ordered Zayd bin Thabit, Abdullah bin al zabar Zayd bin Alas, and Abdul Rahman bin Harith bin Hisham to rewrite the manuscripts in perfect copies. Uthman said to the three Qureshi men, In case you disagree with Zayd bin Thabit on any point in the Quran, then write it in the dialect of Quraysh. The Quran was revealed in their tongue. They did so, and when they had written many copies, Uthman returned the original manuscripts to Hafsa. Uthman sent to every Muslim province one copy of what they had copied, and ordered that all the other Quranic materials, whether written in fragmentary manuscripts or whole copies, be burnt. Zayd bin Thabit added, A verse from Surat Al-Ahsab was missed by me when we copied the Quran, and I used to hear Allah's Apostle reciting it. So we searched for it and found it with Khuzayma bin Thabit al-Ansari. That verse was, Among the believers are men who have been true in their covenant with Allah. A few points to bring up from this hadith are, 1. Note that some of the verses were lost in the battle of Yamama. So the Quran is not complete. The claim that it is exactly what was revealed to Muhammad cannot be authenticated since some of the verses were lost and since Muhammad did not oversee the final assembly of the Quran. 2. Zayd bin Thabit collected it from fragments written on palm stalks, thin white stones, and also some of the verses were memorized by some men. He went around collecting these fragments from all over, with Muhammad not around to verify whether or not what he was writing down was authentic or not. He basically just collected a bunch of manuscripts, which could have come from anywhere. 3. All other manuscripts that had any differences were burned by Uthman. Now who gave Uthman the authority to burn all of the other copies which may have actually been the originals? And also who gave Uthman and Abu Bakr the authority to say what should be included and what should be left out? Who knows how the original Qurans were? Maybe some of them had correct doctrine that coincided with the Bible. I guess we'll never know. So along with the lost verses from the Battle of Yamama, we have a very clear hadith that says a stoning verse for committing adultery was taken out. Before I read it, I want you to ask yourself, if a verse of stoning for adultery was taken out of the Bible, would you say that the Bible is corrupted? Now, with that same answer in mind, use the same measure on the Quran. Sahih Bukhari, Volume 8, Book 82, Number 816. Narrated Ibn Abbas. Umar said, I am afraid that after a long time has passed, people may say, we do not find the verses of the Rajim, stoning to death, in the Holy Book, and consequently they may go astray by leaving an obligation that Allah has revealed. Lo, I confirm that the penalty of Rajim be inflicted on him who commits illegal sexual intercourse if he is already married and the crime is proved by witnesses or pregnancy or confession. Sufyan added, I have memorized this narration in this way. Umar added, Surely Allah's Apostle carried out the penalty of Rajam, and so do we after him. We don't see the stoning verse anywhere in the Quran. What we do see is that in Surat An-Nur 24.2, the penalty for fornication or adultery is to flog each of them with 100 stripes. Maybe the original command, as seen in the previous hadith, was in one of the versions that Uthman burned. But the question needs to be asked, again, who gave authority to whom to take out the stoning verse? And what else was taken out? What we do know is that according to Muslims' own sources and according to the best collection of hadith, the Quran was changed or at least tampered with by Uthman after a very questionable compilation done by Zayd bin Thabit. Then of course, even more questionable is how Uthman burned every copy that differed from his. So as we saw in my previous video inside the Quran, according to the Quran the Bible hasn't been changed. And as we have seen from Muslims own sources, the Hadith, the Quran is changed. Either changed by Uthman or corrupted from the beginning by Zayd bin Thabit or by Muhammad, even before Zayd bin Thabit. With the Quran we have a book that claims to be from God, the God of Abraham, but it contradicts the God of Abraham in too many ways to count. So what are we supposed to do? Believe the testimony from the many books of the Bible or believe one Arab man who not only contradicts the Bible 
but who also was the only witness of his revelations. We all need to search for the truth wherever it may lead. The truth will set you free. This life is temporary. We all need to think where we will spend eternity.